Well, hello, good evening from the Institute of Healthcare Management. Once again, my name is John Wilkes. I'm privileged to be the CEO of the Institute. And this evening, what a sensational webinar we've got for you. We've got the fabulous Christy Adams from Atigo Coaching and Development, who's going to be talking to you about how to be your best, and more importantly, perhaps, how to bring out the best in those people around you. I've, I've been looking forward to this for weeks. We've got loads of you on the call this evening. We will have a Q&A at the end of this. So Christy's going to speak for around 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And then we'll have a Q&A. You're very welcome. Just type your, your questions at the bottom of the screen and we'll go from there. So I'm not going to say any more because you haven't come to listen to me. Christy, over to you. And thank you once again for doing this for the Institute. Thank you, John, and good evening, everyone. John, can I just check that you can hear me okay? Beautifully. Fantastic. Well, hello, everyone. So as John said, I'm Christy Adams. Um, I may well know some of you on this call, so hello to you if I do, and if I don't, hello to you too. Um, I have been in and around the NHS now for 20 years. I've worked in various different leadership roles, um, working with people like you. And uh, five years ago, I set up the Tiga Coaching Development Limited because I am super passionate about um, being human actually and conducting myself and being around people that conduct themselves in a, in a really human way. And so what I'm going to talk to you about today is about being your best you and bringing out the best in others. Um, it's quite a quick whistle stop tour of uh, a four, four hour session that I've condensed down for you into about 20 to 30 minutes. So we're going to whiz through it. So please relax, make yourself comfortable, um, and please do post any questions. And as John said, I will respond to those at the end. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is what the four different communication styles are, what your main communication style is, how do we know people's communication styles, and how you can use slower to have great conversations with people that you don't naturally connect with. So all you need is just something to make some notes on. Okay, so before we go into the content of the webinar, I'm just going to invite you just to, to pause. I know life is on pause at the moment, um, and so why not let's just have another pause. So how about having a bit of time now to think about that person who you find hard to connect with, so perhaps it's because of how they behave, perhaps it's because of what they say, or perhaps it's just because of how they say things. So if you can just get into your mind somebody that you find it challenging to connect with, and then think, what is the specific thing about that that makes it hard to communicate or get on well with them? So what is it that kind of really grates on you and makes it really difficult for you to kind of work or be together harmoniously? And what is it that they do or say that's different to what you do or say? So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds or so just to make some notes and really connect with that person in your mind. Who is that person? Okay, so I'm pretty sure that each and every one of you has got somebody in mind. Now, it may be that it's a colleague, it may be that it's the family member, uh, it may be that it's a friend, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. But I want you just to keep that person in mind as we go through this session. By the end of the session, the aim is that you will have some, um, some thoughts, some tips, some techniques about how you can perhaps manage your interaction with them differently so that you feel better and you get more what you need from it and that they do too. Okay, so some of you may have come across this before, the DISC personality and communication styles profile. If you haven't, that's okay. And if you have, this is going to be a really nice consolidation for you. If you haven't come across DISC, you may well have come across Myers-Briggs or other personality profiling tools. Personally, I work with DISC, which stands for Dominant, Influencing, Steady and Compliant. 
And the reason I work with DISC is uh, because I like colours. And so DISC can um, translate into colours, as you can see there, and I'll talk through with you in a minute. And also because personally, I find it the most, uh, the simple um, profiling system to use. So when I use it with people, I would send them a link and they click on the link. It's an online questionnaire that takes about 15 minutes and then it provides a report and I share the report with people. So you can use this for individuals and you can use this for team development as well. So as I said, this is a whistle stop tour. So I'm just going to talk you through these four different communication styles. So on the top left there, you've got the D, the dominant person, okay? Um, the I is the influencer on the top right. The bottom right, you've got the steady person and the bottom left is the compliant person. And the thing to tell you about DISC is, what we know is that people with similar styles tend to behave in similar ways and actually tend to use the same language, the same words as well. And we are all a mix of each of these, and I'm sure you're already starting to think that. So we aren't only one way of being we aren't only one type in our communication but we certainly most of us at least in fact everybody i work with has a preference and if we understand the different styles we can really have a profound understanding not only of ourselves but of each other which can really help us um, have better conversations so in the top left, you've got the dominant personality style. And if you are this personality style, and certainly if you work with somebody of this style, you'll know that the dominant person is very outgoing. Um, they would often come into a room, you'll know they're in a room, they might sit down uh, and start a meeting or a conversation with what they want to get from that conversation. So they're quite dominant, they're quite results driven, direct, perhaps competitive, very focused, very focused on the task, not focused on the interaction particularly or the conversation, but focused on what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. And in some circumstances, the dominant red person will say, actually, this is how we're going to do it um, and has no qualms about kind of confidently saying that. So if that's you or you know somebody like that, you'll connect with what I'm saying here. Now, perhaps the person that you're finding it difficult to connect with has that style. Let's have a look at the I, which is the influencer, the yellow. So in the same way that the, um, the D, the red person, is quite outgoing, so is the influencer. The difference between the D personality style and the I personality style is that the influencer is far more focused on relationship building, conversation and perhaps chat. So a D is likely to um, want to have an interaction, perhaps in a boardroom or in their meeting space that they're comfortable with, perhaps even in their own office. And I, not so fast, probably wouldn't mind having it in a coffee shop, maybe in the communal kitchen. They don't mind where they, uh, they do the work as long as the work involves um, interaction and, um, and, and really strong communication. If you get a group of yellow people together, you will know about it because there's just chat, 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 and it's really quite, uh, can be quite loud. So if you are yellow or that particular person you're thinking about is yellow, is a high eye, you'll start understanding um, some of the dynamics that, um, that may be presenting themselves to you. Bottom right, you've got the S, the steady person. Now, this is somebody who is also people orientated in the same way as the yellow, the high influencer, but actually really different from the D and the I because much more reserved. So what you'll find is the D and the I will be in a room, be confident, they'll, they'll want their voice heard. Um, they're very happy generally to be the centre of attention. The S is the complete opposite. So this is somebody who focuses on being steady, on being calm, on being secure, sincere, patient, modest. So they will very, very rarely be the first person to speak in a meeting or in a group. Um, they really need to consider what they're going to say before they say it. The most important thing to the, to the Greens, um, to the steady people, is that the environment is comfortable and that everybody around them is comfortable and that they are comfortable. So they're not focused on the conversation, they're focused much more on the environment and what's going on around them. And you can see that I've lowered my voice a bit. So the Ds and the Is, they speak much more confidently, more loudly, 
what you'll experience with the greens, the S's and the blues, the C's, is they speak more, perhaps more slowly, certainly usually more quietly. Now I'm exaggerating this stuff for you because um, we're doing it in a really short space of time and I want you to really sort of think about the extremes here in order to understand that person that you're struggling to connect with. Bottom left, you've got the, the compliant people, so the blues. So these, in the same way as greens, are very reserved. In the same way as the reds, they're very task orientated. But what you'll know if you are a blue or a compliant person, or you're working with somebody that is, or this person that's challenging you is, very important for blue people, compliant people, to analyze everything in detail, in depth. Um, they will not make decisions unless they have every bit of possible information they can get in front of them. Um, very compliant, very accurate, cautious and contemplative. So the blue person is somebody that needs, loves spreadsheets, loves gathering intelligence and information. If you invite a blue person, a compliant person to a meeting without an agenda, it tips them over the edge. It is just not a comfortable place for them to be because they really need to think about why it is that they're being asked to contribute to something. Opposite to the yellows, the high eyes, the influencers that are just very happy to generally be part of a conversation and they don't really mind so much why they're there. Now a couple of things to mention to you. Often the D's and the S's make really good partnerships because you've got that really dominant person that just kind of goes for it. And then you've got the green person, the steady person that pulls them back and makes them think about things in a different way. And the same works for yellows and blues. So the yellow person can be quite frantic and flamboyant and enthusiastic. And the blue compliant person will pull them back to the facts and the evidence and the, um, the analysis. Okay, so the best teams that I work with, and I'm sure any of you that know anything about this as well, you'll know that you kind of want a mixture of all of these people in your teams. Okay, so just let's just think again, get in your mind that person that you are finding hard to connect with and just have a look there and think, mm, where that might they be on this diagram? Okay. So this is similar information, but presented in a different way because not all of us see things in the same ways and like the same information presented in the same way. So let's have a think now about your communication style and how do we know different people's communication styles? Because you're not gonna have a disc profile for all of your uh, colleagues, friends and families. And I suspect you probably won't have one for this person in your mind now. So on a bad day, this can be how we appear, okay? So a red person, the dominant person, can appear aggressive, controlling, driving, overbearing, and intolerant. So if that's the person in your mind, you'll be thinking, oh yeah, absolutely that's what happens. If the person in your mind is a high influencer, so they use their communication skills and they're quite um, enthusiastic and they're that people person, sometimes they can just be really excitable, frantic, quite indiscreet, flamboyant and a bit hasty. So um, if that's you, you'll know that about yourself. If you're frustrated by working and being around somebody like that, you'll be thinking, yeah, they just never finish anything. It's all about just having a chat and nothing ever gets done. Your green steady person. If green steady people are pushed too far, by the way, they can appear red. They're not. It's just that they're so good natured and they're so giving and they're so accepting of the way things are until a point, until they're pushed. And once they've given a little bit more than they're prepared to give, they can appear to be quite docile, bland, plodding, reliant, but most importantly, quite stubborn. They will say, enough, you've taken advantage of my good nature and, I, and I'm done here. And then top left, you've got the blue compliant person. So, you know, they're always searching for facts, evidence, information, analysis. Um, if they're pushed too far, they can really back off. So I'm working with a few blue people now who happen to be computer programmers. It's not my area of expertise at all, but my area of expertise is around coaching and communication. And I know that these two blue uh, 
computer programmers literally take themselves off to the corner of the room. They block off the room around them so they can hide and they put their coats on and they want to be entirely invisible because they're just done with the overload of excitable yellow people and overbearing red people and, and kind green people. They're just done with it. So uh, again, I'm exaggerating, but just have a think. Where, where are you on this? So where's the other person that's, that's challenging for you and where are you? And how do we know? How do we know where other people are? So a few tips. Um, you can see in red the types that this people use certain types of language. So yellows, blues, reds, greens, they have a, almost like a, a, yeah, a different language. So the words that that dominant person will use will be quite different to the green person. So focus, business case, task, mission, um, all those kind of really um, what I would call quite strong words will be the type of language that those people will use. For the yellow people, the eyes, the influencers, much more kind of what, what you might refer to as fluffy language. So isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? It's awesome. It's amazing. Now, if you're somebody that's focused on task and business case, that's quite difficult. If somebody is saying to you, oh, isn't it beautiful and lovely? Because actually that's just not working for you. Bottom left there with the green people, the types of language they might use is, I need more time. I need to slow things down. I just need to breathe, just need to relax. Can we, can we have a calmer interaction? Can we have a calmer conversation? So completely different language to the reds and the yellows. And then the blues there, the compliant people, um, the type of language that they will be using is analyze, evidence, information, strategy, plan, spreadsheets, data. They really wouldn't connect with language like amazing and lovely and beautiful. It's, it's, it's almost like it's not in their vocabulary. So again, I'm exaggerating, but just take a moment and ask yourself, what's the language that that person I'm finding hard to connect with uses? Okay, so I'm just going to take us through this really quickly. So with a red person, these are the things to do. Direct, to the point, focus on results and objectives. Be, I love this one because actually somebody said this to me. Be brief, be bright and be gone. <laughs> uh, I've done the work now. We've done the work now. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so with the worst thing you can do with a red dominant person is hesitate, waffle, focus on feelings and fluff or try and take over and undermine them because they're very clear in their mind what they want. So you have to use different communication skills in order to uh, work harmoniously with them. The yellow influencer, so be friendly, sociable, entertaining, stimulating, open, flexible, talk about having chats rather than meetings maybe, conversations rather than discussions, um, uh, challenges rather than debates, have coffee shop interactions rather than boardroom meetings. Don't bore yellows with details because what happens with yellow people, influencers, is that they generally can find it quite hard to focus on one thing. And so the, the skill for you working with yellow people is to bring them back to what the conversation is supposed to be about. If you bore them with details, they'll just go off somewhere else. Don't tie yellow people down with routine because that just doesn't work for their brains. Their brains aren't wired like that. They need some creativity. And don't generally ask yellow influencing people to work alone because they thrive on being part of a team. And the way they work through solutions is by conversation. Steady green people. So be patient, supportive, slow down, work at their pace, ask their opinion and give them lots of time to answer. So yellows and reds, they just respond because they won't be analysing themselves in their response, whereas greens need to really think about what they're saying before they say it. Never put a green person on the spot, ever. It's just like the worst thing you could do. And certainly don't ever throw a surprise party for a green person. If you're going to do that, do it for a yellow person because they will love it. Okay, with a green person, don't take advantage of their good nature. Like I said to you, they'll push, they'll accept and accept until it's just too much. Don't push them to make quick decisions. And definitely, like I said, don't do any last minute surprises. Blue people, 
give them every bit of possible information available before you ask them to make a decision. So be really well prepared and thorough when you talk to them. They find it, um, and I know this from the blues I'm working with at the moment in particular say to me, we just get so frustrated, Christy, when people come to us with what they think is a problem, but it's just based on a thought. Uh, that's really frustrating for them. They need the evidence. So if you're going to go to the, the blue about something, think about it. What do you want from them? What do they need to know? Put things in writing, have a conversation, back it up via email. Um, they need it, you need it for reference. When they come back and say to you, um, I, I want to you know, refer to that email. Uh, let them consider all of the details. Give them everything you can possibly give them. Don't assume they're like you. The, the way the brain is wired for these people is, is more computer-like than anything else. It's the, there's process involved. Don't get too close or hug blue people. Look, there might be some blue people that love a hug, but just be aware that not all of them will do. The yellows probably do. They quite like a bit of tactile um, interaction definitely don't be flippant on important issues you know if you had have said to somebody uh, three months ago that was blue that had done loads of research on covid oh it's fine we're going to be fine that would have really upset them because look where we are now and they would have spent hours and hours and hours researching it and they'll be now thinking well i knew this was going to happen so never be flippant if somebody that's of this personality preference presents you with something even if you think it's not important there are ways of um managing that aren't there and definitely don't change their routine and please don't invite blues to a meeting without telling them what it's about or tell them that you want to meet with them in 10 minutes because it's uh, it's actually a really unkind thing to do for them because their brains can't process that in the way that perhaps others can so I, I know John will be wanting me to speed along here so just a very quick reminder for, for you'll probably know this I'm sure um, this is how we communicate. So only 7% of, of what we say is about words. Actually, in terms of how we communicate with each other, we, we um, experience interactions with people. 55% of that is about body language. So if you're sat there with this person that you're finding challenging to connect with like this, or, you know, kind of really obviously not wanting to be around them, they're going to pick that up more than you saying, oh, this is brilliant. What you're telling me is wonderful, because obviously it's incongruent, isn't it? So I'm, again, I'm exaggerating this and you're all, you know, hugely um, smart people and you will know this. But just remember that actually how you show up is way more important than what you say. All right, so I'm just going to take you through this now. So this is this is what I can um, give to you to take away that hopefully will enable you to think more about your interactions with this particular person that's challenging you, but everybody, so slower. Okay, so S, signals. What's happening to make you think that this is not a good interaction? So just stop. What are you picking up that's making you think this isn't good? Now, it might be a feeling inside you that's just exasperated. It might be that somebody's stepping away from you. It could be all sorts of things. So what are the signals that are making you think, mm -mm, this is not good? Listen. So not only listen to them in terms of the words that they're using, but what is it they're actually saying to you? Sometimes it's more about what people aren't saying, isn't it, than what they are saying. So think, what, listen, what are they saying? Observe them. What's their body language? And actually, I don't know about you, but I get quite affected by energy. So if somebody's energy around me is positive, I can pick that up. If it's not, I would be uh, you know, very aware of that. So what's, some, what's their body language and their energy like? Words. What are the words and the metaphors and the descriptions that they are using? So we touched on that before, didn't we, about, you know, reds like the words like task and focused, uh, yellows like um, chat and, and conversation. So different, what words do they use? And then E, empathy. How can you see their view? So you're not them. You're not walking in their shoes. You never will. And you may be completely different from them. But knowing what we've talked about today and their lens and their view on the world, how can you see their view? And then the last thing is react. So now you've done all those things. What do you want to say? And how do you want to say it? And, and what language will you use? So when you interact with that person now, how are you going to do that? And 
just a tip for you when you're communicating with somebody that's really different from you try using their words because sometimes using their words will just trigger something in their mind and that will make them feel like you've heard them and actually if you use their words you're you're communicating through their lens um, and sometimes just by using other people's words, it can shift interactions and conversations in ways that perhaps you might not be able to imagine now, but trust me, it will. Okay, so let's just spend a couple of minutes. So let's think about that person then who you thought about at the beginning and throughout that you found it hard to connect with. What was that specific thing or what is that specific, specific thing that made it? makes it hard to communicate or get on with them now what's their communication style or color have you been able to identify that what do you know now that can help when you communicate with them and what will you do more of less of or perhaps completely differently now you know what you know and you've um, met slower as a concept so i'm just going to give you just a few seconds make your notes So I'm really excited about the Q&A because I'm hoping there'll also be some reflections from you about um, the shifts that may have happened in, for you in the last 20 minutes or so. And I'm particularly interested to know some of the things that you, know, you might have had a light bulb moment and thought, that's why that person and I just don't get on because we actually speak a different language. So what is it that you're going to do differently? I'm super intrigued to find out. OK, so these just a reminder, this is what we did. We looked at the communication styles, your communication style. So hopefully you've got a bit of an understanding about that now, um, perhaps more so than you did before. We know about different people's communication styles because we're going to go through um, the, the process of listening to them and identifying the words that they use, the metaphors, the things that are important to them. And hopefully you now will have an idea about how to use slower as a way of um, starting to have great, certainly better conversations with people that you don't naturally connect with. OK, so please do keep in touch. I know we've got some time together now. And just to kind of highlight to you that this is 30 minutes of a three day programme, which can be standalone days. It doesn't have to be three days um, about how to be your best and bring out the best in others. And it covers all these things here. Um, so do get in touch if you want to know any more about any of these things here. I have to tell you that the disc profiling, I've put a little smiley face there for you, your team or your family. I've actually done this on my family members. My husband and I did it and it was we've been together 21 years um, and it was quite life changing. So if you want to understand more about yourself and your family, then this is certainly something that you may be interested in. Maybe even just share these slides with them. Um, and there's all my contact details there. So. Thank you for listening. I hope that you got something from that. And John, I'm going to hand over to you now. Super duper. Well, thank you, Christy. What, a, what an intriguing session. Because I, I always think that when we're in leadership or influencing positions, it's always tempting to think that the way we look at the world is the only acceptable way. And I think what you've managed to tune into is this business of being self-aware is such an important uh, attribute for people to have so that they can interact more fully and closely with others whom they're aspiring to lead perhaps. Uh, we've got loads of questions so you're going to have to be fairly rapid fire with all okay. of these. I'm going to take, take a sip of water. Have a sip of water. So the first one is from, uh, is from Tom and Tom says can people change between different colours? Is environment or situation an influence on this? Can you influence this and move people? And he goes on to say which is why I've not given his surname. He works with a grumpy, unempowered red. Oh, Tom. Tom, my friend, you have all my sympathies. Um, don't know what colour you are, Tom, but I think a grumpy red is, is always a challenge. So um, the short answer is yes, you can move from um, one personality preference, dominant style to another. Yes, you can support people to be aware of um, the colours that they're not, so they can build more of that into themselves. Um, the thing I would say about it is that it takes a huge amount of self-awareness and um, desire to want to move to another personality um, state. So you can 
uh, by doing what we've been doing here, think about how to see things through another lens. But if you're asking me if I could work for an hour or 10 hours with your grumpy red and, and turn them green, I absolutely couldn't do that. But what I could do is um, through this type of interaction and conversation, make them realise that actually their way is one way and there are there are plenty of other ways and views and lenses on the world. I hope that helps you, Tom. Thank you. That's a great first answer. There's, a, there's another, it's almost like a collection of questions that I'm going to try to, I've, I've seen Mwamba's uh, question and I'm going to use theirs as the basis for this, I think. So uh, Mwamba says, how do you make sure that you're not using the language of the person with whom you're interacting and thereby losing your own? And they say, I sometimes feel like I'm having to change mine to avoid conflict, which can be exhausting. Oh my goodness. Mwamba, did you say, John? Yeah, yes. hello Mwamba. And hello to everyone else who um, had the same sorts of questions. Um, so there's, the most important thing about being you is being you and being your authentic you. So at any point you step out of your own shoes and out of your own power, you've lost yourself and you've lost your ability to be who you are are and how you are meant to be so i think there's a balance to be struck isn't there there's a balance between using your values and your motivations and your passion to have a conversation with somebody um, perhaps using a combination of your language and their language so what you don't want to do is try and become someone else because quite frankly don't bother everyone else is taken there's no point trying to be someone else but what you can do is is kind of morph and merge your world or your lens of the world and theirs and you can use a bit of your language and a bit of, your, of their language and um, sometimes just using one word that people use repeatedly can really help so i've worked with somebody before for example who's used the word structure over and over and over again now i would never use the word structure it doesn't doesn't flow for me but because I knew that word was really important I had a difficult conversation with them being me being bringing all of me to the conversation but instead of using um, plans I used the word structure and it just changed it so sometimes it's those tiny tweaks isn't it that are going to make a difference but but never try and be someone that you're not because it just doesn't work Okay, I'm going to move on now, Christy, if I may. Uh, I think what we'll do, we'll go to uh, Colin. Colin says, hi, Christy. Being a shy, retiring yellow, as you well know, sounds like you know, Colin, what would you say are the most important aspects to consider when presenting or interacting with groups of people where you'll be engaging with a range of lots of different types of personalities? I guess that's most of us every day so i guess what colin is saying is there a technique or model for him to use so that he can be, be more multifaceted in his ability to appeal to different colored groups if that makes sense yeah thank you john hello colin and hello and you know the rest of you may be thinking the same how do i do this this feels really complicated how can i be one person one minute and one person so don't just don't. I tell you that the most important thing in an interaction is listening. Just don't speak. Sometimes just not speaking will yield you the greatest results. So from a coaching perspective, and many of you will have coaching skills, when we coach, us coaches only speak for 20% of the time. The coachee speaks for 80% of the time. And when I work with teams to support them to, um, to gel more as a harmonious team, we use that. So how could you use that kind of listening 80% of the time and only talking 20% of the time? So if you're in a, in a diverse team where you've got people of all different personality types and you're trying desperately hard to, um, to connect with them all and to, you know, to get the best results from, for all of them and for you, sometimes the best thing to do is to just listen. And once you've listened, really listened, you'll hear each of them use a word or words that are really relevant and important to them so structure if that person keeps using the word structure when you have an interaction with them you just throw that word in don't stop being you 
just throw the word in. A flamboyant yellow needs to actually just sometimes shh, just listen, listen. Thank you, Christy. And if, if for those of you uh, who are interested in watching some videos around how to give effective feedback to people of all sorts of different uh, disc uh, persuasions, you can watch me on the new IHM digital YouTube channel when I cover exactly that point. So I'm so thrilled, Chrissy, to be able to just drop a little advert in for that as well. Um, right, I'm going to try one more. I'm going to go to Ian, who says, change is inevitable. So why do agents for change, who put their heads above the parapet, so often get shot down unless they have the courage of their convictions? Now, I'm, I'm guessing before it comes to you, Christy, that I guess the answer is here. If you're an agent for change and you're going to put your head above the parapet, have the courage of your conviction. But over to you. Yeah, gosh. I sometimes, I mean, I've been in and around the NHS for 20 years and I don't think I would ever have called myself an agent for change or a change agent. But I think just by virtue of being in the NHS, you end up becoming one, don't you? Because there's just a, we're in constant change. Um, and absolutely, and I've, I know I'm, I'm with you in, I've put myself above, you know, my head above the parapet before and, and had myself shot down and it's hard, it's really hard to do that. But, you know, if you're going to do it, you've obviously done it for a reason. There's the reason you stood up and said, this is what I think should be happening as opposed to what is happening. Um, in terms of why people don't like change, so um, the different colour profiles don't like it for different reasons. So the reds don't like it probably because they haven't been in control of it. Sorry, reds. Um, the yellows, the high influencers don't like it because they haven't had enough time to chat it over and to really kind of understand it with uh, in the context of conversation. The greens don't like it because any change for somebody that needs steadiness and comfort in their lives is so difficult and if you're not I'm, I'm not green I'll, I'll be honest I'm not but I work with a lot and I have family members that are and it's it's incredibly painful for those people to confront change um, and for blue people the compliant people they're not going to come on your journey with you unless they've got every single bit of information that is that is available and even if it's, it isn't available they need it they need to find it they're so hungry for evidence and data and facts so unless you present a really comprehensive um a reason for why you're doing something that's backed up by evidence in they're not going to come on your journey so you've got to play to all four quadrants haven't you um and speak their language not just their words but really understand why it is that they just don't want change but but it, if you're a good change agent then you will be able to do that thank you chris there's a super book uh, if you're interested in on change it's the best one i've read and it's it's the fabulous our iceberg is melting by john cotter i i uh, heartily recommend it to you super actually my children when they were young they used to enjoy reading it as well because it's about a penguin colony. Um, but let's not do uh, too big an advert for Mr. Cotter, who I don't think is a member of the IHM. So um, actually, John, I can tell you something about penguins because it was in the home learning grid for my, <laughs> my daughters this week. That apparently, people there are seventeen types. Who wow. knew? I who know. knew? And and you're going to have to develop a whole new uh, colour scheme for them as well. I suspect you know. Should you be asked to coach them? Anyway, look, we are out of time. I've got to say, Christy, thank you so much. We've done lots of these uh, webinars with all sorts of different people. And this is right out of the top drawer, in my opinion. And just looking at the reaction from the people who've been on the webinar, I think I don't speak alone in that regard. So I've no doubt we'll be looking to do another one of these with you. I should also say that we are looking to uh, work with Christy's company to develop some IHM short course uh, content and we hope to formalize that soon but for now Christy once again thank you so much that was absolute box office and uh, from my perspective to all of you from the IHM thank you so much for tuning in this evening stay safe stay strong and thank you all for the fantastic work that you're doing bye bye <laughs>